How much would it cost to go to the moon? The possibility of a human visiting the moon was once considered to be pure science fiction, but the 20th century space race proved everyone wrong. The United States and the Soviet Union expanded their space programs at an outstanding rate, culminating in the first manned Luna mission in 1969, wherein the United States put two men on the moon for a matter of hours. Since then, trips to the moon have become blasé to the point that NASA no longer finds them worthwhile. In fact, no humans have visited the moon since the Apollo 17 mission of 1972. The truth is, lunar missions are enormously expensive, and humans aren't necessarily more efficient at research than their robotic counterparts. Since then, there have been many rovers and lunar orbits to collect data, but none have required a human presence. But what would the moon look like for a vacation destination? Today, we're exploring how much it would cost to go to the moon. As mentioned previously, the first lunar missions pushed science to its absolute breaking point. Unsurprisingly, this wasn't cheap. Project Apollo as a whole cost $25.4 billion, or approximately $153 billion in 2018 dollars, when adjusted for inflation. Though the US is wealthy enough to afford this, they don't see a tangible benefit. But in recent years, two factors have made access to the moon much more viable. The first factor is improvements in technology that have made space travel more affordable than at any other time in history. NASA recently held a press conference announcing that they estimated it would only take 20 to 30 billion dollars to get a permanent human population on the moon. This is a fraction of the price that the space race cost in the 1960s. The second factor is the advent of private corporations traveling to space. NASA intends to partner with companies like SpaceX to build a space station and shuttle humans to the moon. In the past, space travel was purely a national prerogative. But as public interest waned, NASA lost a huge percentage of its funding. Since then, private companies have picked up where the United States left off and are perfecting technology to make space travel efficient and viable. For instance, Elon Musk's aerospace juggernaut SpaceX has revolutionized the practice of reusable rockets. Just this year, SpaceX succeeded in recovering all three of its Falcon Heavy rockets in a single mission, meaning that a sizable portion of the investment can be recovered for the next launch. In the next year, they hope to recover the nose of a rocket as well. All of this means that the cost of flying to the moon is plummeting. As a result, the era of space tourism is upon us. NASA has opened up the International Space Station to tourists, and already companies are buying rides to fly so-called private astronauts up to the laboratory in the sky for a visit. For approximately $52 million per person, you can purchase a seat to fly with SpaceX, once Elon Musk's space company begins flights to the ISS. Allowing tourists on the ISS is a major shift for NASA, as the agency used to prohibit private astronauts from flying to the station. Previously, private astronauts would have to fly on Russian rockets and capsules to reach the station. NASA will get $35,000 for each night a tourist spends on the ISS, according to agency officials. Pricing details on NASA's website reveal those costs largely go towards things such as life support, food, air, energy, and data. Another company, Moon Express, dreams of budget flights to the moon in the next decade. They became the first private company to land a rover on the moon in 2017 and won a $25 million prize from Alphabet, Google's parent company. They have the lofty goal of landing humans on Mars by 2024. But unlike NASA, they have no interest in creating a permanent population on Earth's largest satellite. Their aspiration is to land humans on the moon for only $10,000 a person, only double some of the most luxurious flights on Earth. These goals may sound like a pipe dream, but there is already a historical precedent. All the way back in 2001, Dennis Tito became the first cosmic tourist when he paid $20 million to visit the International Space Station. Though he only spent eight days in orbit, it shows that there is a demand for space travel and an undeniable feasibility. And America will not be the only contender in the next chapter of the space race. India recently made headlines when they launched their first lunar rover, Chandrayaan-2. This was especially impressive because the whole process only cost $74 million. Cynics pointed out that this cost much less than the 2013 Hollywood blockbuster Gravity, which had a $100 million budget. 
This marks India's first genuine attempt to establish themselves as a cosmic superpower and proves that Space Race 2.0 will be much more contentious than the USSR and the USA duking it out in the 60s. But don't discount the United States either. NASA and the White House asked Congress for an extra $1.6 billion in next year's budget to accelerate human missions to the moon and return people to the lunar surface by 2024. The space agency is requesting these funds in addition to the $21 billion budget that the president already requested for NASA. The additional funds are meant to help NASA meet Pence's challenge of sending astronauts back to the moon within the next five years. During a speech at a meeting of the National Space Council in March, Pence said that NASA's original goal of sending humans to the moon by 2028 was just not good enough and that the space agency would pull off this new deadline by any means necessary. Russia's plans are conspicuously absent, but rumors circulate that both they and China will be major contenders in the next age of space travel and competition. They are remaining patently quiet about their ambitions until they are ready to launch. The bottom line is, the world has rekindled its interest in interstellar exploration. The future of space will be decided both by patriotic governments and private interests who will sell their services initially to ultra-wealthy clients and then to the masses. First, the moon will be the ultimate exotic tourist destination. Then it will be a permanent home for a set of adventurous astronauts. And many people see the moon as a test run for a permanent population on Mars. Of course, some critics claim that we should concentrate on improving our own planet before relocating across the solar system. But at the end of the day, humans are fascinated by space. They will find a way to make exploration cheap and accessible, and within the next few decades, trips to the moon may become as commonplace as a flight across the Atlantic. In the meantime, you can already reserve your place on a Luna mission with a multi-million dollar deposit. At least at the moment, this is the true cost of a flight to the moon.